probably, she's probably known Bill almost as long as I have, I think. I think. Okay. Alrighty. Are you going to make an introduction or anything? Are you going to, do you have anything to say? Or? I think I just did. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very good. Have any questions? Go ahead. Yes. Um, everybody knows me pretty much. Everybody pretty much knows who I am and what I do. And Gretchen's new. Are you? Okay. Um, well, you pretty much know what I do. Have you seen any of the videos? Yeah. I haven't seen the videos. Okay. And Donna? Okay. Um, tonight I don't know who's coming, but I'll say this. I know that they always, when they're sitting here, they come through really strongly. Uh, the cash and whoever comes is always, a, comes in even greater when I'm sitting at Gossamer Woods. So because of this vortex and because of the positivity of the people and the the love and understanding. I, I feel, I always feel much more comfortable here than anywhere else, even at more comfortable than in my house because of this vortex and because all the love that's built up over the years from people being here and different things that have happened here. It all, there's always a remnant of all the good and positive things that have happened here, right here in this spot. You know what I mean? It's, it's a wonderful thing. And I, I sit down here and I go, Oh my God, it feels so good. <laughs> so I don't know who's coming tonight, if they'll have a message or if they're just going to ask questions or whatever, but I've asked them all to be available and whoever has um, chip number one will come through. So um, if you'll bear with me, I'll just do, is there any questions before I start first? I usually ask that because sometimes there are some questions. Well, what I do is this. I'll say, I'm going to be, I have a personal channel, or I, I'm going to Gossamer Wood on this date at this time, and is if any of you can't make it, just let me know. I usually just ask them if they can't make it. So if they say, if I get a message from, say, Lakesh or something, Lakesh says no. If I, that comes to my mind, then I know that they're not coming. That particular one will not be able to make it. But I asked today, and well, I've been asking all week, because I, um, I do several sessions a week. So I ask all week if anybody couldn't come, and I haven't got any no's. So if, uh, oh. so whoever is most available or has the best message will come, and maybe more than one. Who knows? Everyone can sleep all night. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be that long. So, but anyway, um, any other questions? Okie dokie. I'm going to do a little bit of meditation. Um, everybody think some positive thoughts. Give me some positive energy. Not that I need it on here, but it, it always helps. So, um, and we'll see who comes. I am Shell, the Chikani. Hello, good evening to you all. Hello. I do have a message before I start, 
or before you ask questions, I mean. Yes. Yes. I want to talk tonight about your shadow energy. Does anybody know what that is? I find it interesting when I visit the earth and when I visit any part of your societies that I find a lot of shadow energy. Not that, that you can be without it, but shadow energy is all those things that make you not innocent, that takes away your purity, that takes away your joy sometimes. Do you understand what I'm speaking of? That energy which is negative within you, that you hold into yourselves, that you do not release for whatever reason. I am here to tell you that there are ways to release that energy and live a fuller life, live a happier existence, become a more, more pure human being, as you call yourselves, become a more, well, you already are perfect P beings, just the way you are. Because of the way you were created, you are all perfect. However, there is such a thing as becoming even more perfect. Because you have these things in, inside of you that you hold on to. You hold on to them and they affect your life and bring you um, away from those things that could be much more positive for you. Do you understand this? All right. Let me explain what dark or... I shouldn't call them dark, because dark energy is a scientific term which talks about the different matters and energies in the universe. I'm talking about those matters and a shadow darkness within each person. That would be things like shame and guilt and hatred and anger. Do you understand these shadow terms? These are shadow energies that are within each human being. And when you are born, you do have a little bit of that. Do you know where that comes from? That comes from all the chakras that are born into you. Not that, not that there is a lot there, because they are not activated at, at first to be read. Do you understand? When You can't have a chakra reading at the age of zero. So, therefore, they are not really coming into activation until you are aware of who you are and what chakras are and things of that nature. When you learn about those things, then they become activated in a way that you can use them. Before that, they are just in you as a shadow of your past lives. Do you understand that? All right. So, these things that you call shadow energies... They can affect you in very negative ways and cause problems in your life. They are the things that take away that innocence, that purity, that goodness that you had as a child when you couldn't remember, you know, what good and bad was. You didn't know what good and bad was. You were innocent. You were pure. But then these things come in, shame and guilt and, and all these other things, anger. There's a big one. I see this so commonly when I come to Earth and do my studies, people are dealing with their, their anger and their shame, but they're not dealing with it properly. Some people say, oh, if you scream it out, scream it out, that'll help. No. You know why? It reinforces it because it's coming out here, but it's coming back in here through the ears. You're hearing what you're saying. You're re-encouraging those thoughts that were bad. You say, oh, bad, bad, bad. And it comes back into the ears. Okay? Do you understand that? It is not that you can shout it out and it goes out that way and you don't hear it. But it comes back into the ears. So if you go, you're a bad person. You need to do this. You need to do It's coming back into your ears and it's coming back into a circle. Coming back, back, back. It is not being released. It is being reinforced. Do you understand that? And so it doesn't get less. It gets more. 
You understand that? But there will have some people say, oh yes, what you have to do is beat it out. So they give you a mallet or a, a plastic pillow and have you beat, 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 beat. Beat out your anger, beat out. No, what does that do? What does it do when you beat out your anger? It makes you feel better, so you want to beat some more. It doesn't take away the need for the anger. It doesn't take away the anger. It makes you want to use the pillow beater again. <laughs> so you want to go back to that doctor and beat him up with your pillow beater. But it, it makes you feel good temporarily. Why? Because ah, you got rid of some of that negative energy. No! You got rid of what you thought was negative energy, but what you did was just br brought in, uh, released some of those chemicals in your body, like endorphins and things of that nature. When you exercise it automatically release, you just release them a little more. And so you feel great. So you say, oh, that must work. That's working. Yes, it's working. No. It's a temporary fix because you are coming back and you, are, you come back to the anger. Because you have not what? You have not gotten rid of it in a proper way. Do you understand that? And I have a reason for coming here to tell you about these things. Because I see these needs in you all the time to get rid of these angers and these feelings and these shames. There's one, there is, I have five steps. Do you want to hear them? The first step is to name it. Name that thing that is causing the problem. Is it shame? Is it guilt? Is it anger? What is it? What is that thing in you? Maybe it's more than one thing. It may be a, many things. It may be guilt, anger, shame, all hatred, all those things. It could be all of them, but name them. Go into your head and say, yes, I'm feeling anger. Yes, I'm feeling shame. Yes, I'm feeling whatever. Whatever you are feeling, name it. That is the first thing you must do. You must name it. And then what you have to do? You have to confront it. You say, why? Why is there shame? Why is there guilt? Why is there anger? Why is there hate? What, what particular thing caused it? What caused this feeling? Sometimes when you confront it, you realize it's not necessarily true that you should have it. Let me give you an example. There are people around the world that if someone dies, they feel guilty because they didn't do more. They felt maybe they should have been the one that should have died instead of that person. They feel like th that maybe that uh, some way they could have made a difference and it could have pushed them into a better life and they didn't have to. Or they, there was an accident and they didn't tell them that cousin Harry called and said the roads were bad. Or, and so they feel guilt. And hatred for themselves or they somebody did something wrong to you like a minister raped a child oh what does the child feel the child feels guilt why why does the child feel guilt it's not the child's fault but yet we're trained as human people you are trained i should say and we were trained differently but you are trained that as a child, that would be your guilt because you didn't do anything to stop it. And what if you tell mom and dad and everything like that? It's still on you sometimes. It's still on you. Also, there are, there are so many things that are like this in your world. I'm sure you can think of a situation where you felt guilt, anger, shame, or hatred and you have a really good reason for it. Okay, so now you've named it and you confronted it. What do you have to do next? You have to understand it. You have to understand why you're feeling that way. Even if you confront it, sometimes you do not understand it. You can confront the situation and still not understand it. You can say, yes, this is what happened, but still feel the same way. Do you understand? 
You must understand why you feel that way. Why is it that I feel that way because of this situation? Why is that? Once you understand why you feel that way, it could be because no one else is there to take the guilt. No one else is there to feel the anger, so you brought it on yourself. You bring these things on yourself sometimes, but there are really, really realities where these are true things for you. You, need, you needed to feel the anger. You needed to feel the hate for yourself. You needed to feel ashamed. But discover that reason, the truth behind the feeling, the truth behind the feeling. You understand? Because only then can you take the next step. And you've heard this before, but you must forgive it. Yes, even if it's what you think is unforgivable. You know why you have to forgive it? Because it affects everything in your life. Everything in your life. This affects everything in your life. Until you forgive it. Do you understand? And then what do you do? Many people, many people forgive it and then bring it back. Forgive it and then bring it back. Forgive it and then bring it back. No. You forgive it and you let it go. You forgive it and you let it go. Do you understand? So many people are at the a point of forgiving themselves and then they bring it back. In, in this now, you bring it back, and it affects the next now because it'll make it twice as easy to bring it back again, and again, and again. And sometimes it causes you to create more anger, guilt, and shame, and hatred, because you never forgave this one, and so you have a bad self-image of yourself. And if you have a bad self-image of yourself, you let yourself go to do more things that are evil in your mind. But you don't plan on it, necessarily. But yet, it just doesn't feel right to let it go. Why doesn't it feel right to let it go? Why doesn't it feel right that after you forgive yourself, you don't let it go? You know why? Because sometimes you need to forgive somebody else first. But usually you have to forgive yourself first. But if somebody really did wrong you, somebody really did cause you pain and understanding, you have to say to yourself, yes, I do forgive them. And now I can forgive myself. Because now I do not need that anger anymore because they are forgiven. Do you understand? How hard is that? It is the hardest thing for humanity to do within themselves. It is the very, very hardest thing for humanity to do. I understand that. But listen to my words. It is possible. And you will know what? If I say, I forgive you, 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 I forgive you. Does that make it easier for you to forgive yourself? Not necessarily. That is right. But you have to look in the mirror and say, I forgive you. Look in that mirror. Look in that mirror. Be sincere and say, I forgive you. Because then the next step of letting it go can happen. And you don't have to keep bringing it back. You do not have to keep it in a big cycle and having all your nows be affected by it. Do you understand? Do you understand? This is my lesson for today because I see so many struggling with their negativity. Now you'll never get rid of all your negativity. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that you're going to become pure as a babe again. That is not what I'm saying. But I'm saying that these things that are holding you back, these main pieces 
of negativity that you can name and that you can deal with can be gone. Deal with them. Don't let them just become a cycle of continuous pain and suffering in your life. You are ascending as a culture, as a species, as a community, if you will, because once you are ascended, you will be a community in the truest form that you will be able to communicate with each other in a way that you've never guessed that you could possibly do. Continue to send each other energy in a positive way because that, my good people down here, that is touch in some way. Everyone needs touched. Everyone needs touched. And if you send your energy out to touch them, yes, it's not as good as a touch with a hand, but it is better than nothing. And it is a connection. And it is a positive way to communicate. And you are all together in that. And you are at the beginning of it, so you do not feel it as strongly as you might in a few more years, maybe 10 or 20, but I know that it is a positive thing. And with that, I will move forward to ask if you have any questions. If there is anything you need me to further explain, I will do so. But did you understand the lesson? Yes. 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 There, was it a valuable lesson for you? Sure. Very valuable. Very good. Then you may ask questions. Yeah. No questions? As a human species, are we getting any better? Or maybe I should digress and say, how many years has Shell been monitoring us in the holographic field? Oh, I've been monitoring you for several years now. However, since Bashar has come to Earth, I have been also here a couple years after him. And I have uh, studied humankind in many different cultures, but I find the United States culture to be the most diverse because there is so much diversity in this culture. They're the, there's just many languages and many, many things happening here that are, um, other cultures are much the same. Like they're either a very angry culture or they're a very peaceful culture or they're very um, agricultural or they're very industrial. China is also very interesting as well. But um, the United States is even more diverse than that. So I learn quite a bit. But I've learned that all over the world, this need for getting rid of the garbage, as you would call it, is a, such a necessity. Because people are sad and lonely and depressed. And it's because of all these things that have gathered in them that they cannot release. So that is why I'm here to tell you about that, how to release it. Do you understand? But yes, I understand your question. I have been here a long time. Not as long as Bashar, but... Are we getting any better? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I have to tell you that even though you have these suppressed feelings and anxieties and all that stuff, you have managed to start connecting in a different way. You have started to speak what you really feel about love and touch and things of this nature. You're beginning to connect as a community in the ideas of the future. Do you understand? It is still at the ground level, of course, but it is moving forward and progress is positive. It is very notable. Do you have, do you have any idea how come human species pushes all this stuff inside and just... Yes, walk. I do have an answer for that. Um, you are singular people. Each one of you has your own identity, your own person, and you are 
for the most part. Very, very proud of what you do, your creativeness, your life, what you have done or what you haven't done. It's all you. Right here. In a telepathic culture, we share thoughts and ideas without having to write it on a piece of paper, without having to watch it on television, without having to speak it out to each other, which we may not understand, but our intents are shown one to another. This makes things much more easy and understandable, not for only your own emotions and your own mentalities, but for a community of people that think similar thoughts, but are still individuals. However, we really understand completely how much of this we need to get rid of. And when you run into someone that has these things in our culture, which is occasionally, you see it immediately. And you're able to say, I can help you with that. If you need help with that, I can help you with that. Because a lot of you keep it hidden. Your faces do not show what's in here. But telepathy, you cannot hide everything. And so we can help easier because it's revealed. After I talk to you for five minutes, it will be revealed. So those people that have things unhidden usually don't talk to anybody. And then you know that there are things that they don't want to reveal. So it's not that way here because you'll talk to each other constantly and not reveal things. We would be a better culture if we could reveal things? So oh, yes. Things could be honest? Yes. If the telepathy brings that out... The, to some degree, not totally, but there are things you cannot hide. There are things in your life that if I was telepathic with you right now, you could not hide because they're on the surface of your brain. But you can hide them now from each other. Yes? Yes? Yes. <laughs> but you would not be able to hide from me. But I will not do that. That's not why I'm here. Right. Are we going this? You are learning this. Your time will come. It, depending on how quickly you become a community and feel the intent of each other and feel the energy of each other and feel the, for the love between each other, the faster that you understand that this is important for the ascension, the faster this planet will become telepathic. So as I understand it, you're encouraging us <clears throat> to help the other people we deal with all day long. Yes, and you do that with your your body talk. You do that with your any with your understanding. Anyone that is understanding of anyone else's problems and is willing to listen and understand, they are helping with ascension. Do you understand that? Because that in itself is a great relief to someone else. And you do not have to carry that burden, but yet you can help them release it in one way or another. Now I'm telling you, I gave you a formula to release it in a deeper way. But body talk, Reiki, forms of energy healing also help remove toxins and things of that nature within the body. And if it's intended, it can help with emotional awareness as well. Yes. But this is a formula that goes a little deeper. It is to bring out those things that are very deep and are very, that cause much pain in the person and comes out through their daily lives in anger or self-hatred even. Do you understand that? But Reiki and other forms of energy healing, body talk and reconnection, they can all help, yes. You are becoming more genetically suitable all along. You've been, you have evolved quickly within the last hundred years. You realize how quickly that last hundred years, it just, 
it was like this. It came and it sped right up through the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000. It was very, very fast those last 60 years. So everybody on Earth is genetically... Not everybody is genetically, but most people are ready. Most. most. Do you know people in this room that are? Yes, there's people in this room that are moving forward and especially recently, let's put it that way, especially recently, because you're becoming more self-aware, for one thing, and you are working on yourselves, not only as a species, one to another, but on your own weaknesses and thought patterns. And that, I have noticed that awareness in many people recently, but they don't know how to release the, the the real deep things. So that's why I'm here to give that lesson today. Because even now, some of you are thinking, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. I think we need to give ourselves permission to do that. Yes. Yeah, yes, you do. Yeah. That's why I said, name it first. Because if you're not willing to name it, you're not ready. Do you understand that? Because some people can, are not willing to name it even. They're not willing to go there. They're not willing to say, I have these things. Have, have some people just blocked that? Yes. Because there's, it seems like some, like some people are just simply not able to understand it. They're not on that page. It's like it's so foreign to them. Correct. Okay. But, you know, something will happen. Perhaps my little speech that will maybe just put a little spark somewhere. Someone listening will have a spark of it and say, you know, um, that might pertain to me, maybe, maybe. And then if they hear, hear it again, well, you know, maybe I'll see if there's anything there. But they already know, you see, the very spark of it, the very spark that they think they might think that they might have it, tells you that they have it. Right? Yeah. And then they can look for it and name it. Yeah, that's the that's number the, one thing. That's the beginning. If you could just name it to acknowledge it within themselves. Right. They have to name it, and that's the acknowledgement. So. We as a whole human species seem to be doing that a little better. We. But that's why you're here helping us to get it. Yeah. We see that you're doing a little better. However. So many are stuck there. So many are stuck there. They are stuck in their, their self-hatred and their... And they don't need to be because many, 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 many times they are not to blame for those feelings. They are not to blame for their guilt, their anger, their hatred, things. They're, and they, those that are really to blame for those feelings, it may be a little harder. But if you realize that you're really not to blame, it's much easier. However, you still can move forward because if you love yourself, if you love yourself, if you love yourself, then you will be able to handle the self-inspection the self-inspection, which we, our species does, your species does, but we do it a little more effectively. That's why I'm here to say, do it a little more effectively, and your lives will be a little bit better. You won't have to deal with that pain and hatred and guilt and all that stuff. You will still have some, something in there that you won't want to give up, I'm sure. But let's get rid of the main one. That one that keeps you down. That one that makes you miserable. And you don't even know it makes you miserable sometimes. Find it. Name it. Find it and name it. Do you have any guide as to how to help someone realize that they can love themselves? Because I come across people all of the time that say to me, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to love myself. Tell them you love them. Why can't you love them?
Why can't you love yourself if I love you? I know. I do it all the time. <laughs> and they, that causes a thought. Okay. It causes a thought, a spark. There is nothing that you can do to make someone love themselves except love them anyway. And when you love them anyway and tell them the things that you love, Tell them that at least they can love those things first. You can love their sense of humor. You can love their kindness. You can love their artistry. It's them that you love, parts of them. Let them love those parts first. And with a growing love, it, what happens? it starts to affect other parts of the self. It grows within, because any kind of love for yourself is part of the spirit. And as the spirit grows with those small loves, then they realize they have to get rid of whatever. And if they say they can't, tell them, yes, you can. And when they say they can't, that's a circle. That's part of their circle. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. This now, I can't. Next now, I can't. The next now, I can't. I can has to be part of their circle. And, and when they get, the, I can, I can, I can, I can, I can, guess what? They can. They can. Do you understand that? You, you build a negative circle or you build a positive circle. When you start to build your positive circle, it's difficult because you do not see the results of a positive circle this minute. But as it builds, it gets more positive. And then guess what? It comes back around and it becomes a positive circle because that's how it works. I want to ask a question which I answered in my way, like made a guess, but I didn't really have an answer. So the question was very straightforward. So yes. Grays have big eyes. Yes. Uh, human alien hybrids are depicted with big eyes. Yes. And grays and hybrids are telepathic. So logically, eyes should be an organ for telepathy, used for telepathy. Is it right? Can be, yes. Um, let me tell you why the eyes are big, though. It is not really having to do anything with telepathy or anything like that. It has to do with how much light is on their planet. They need bigger eyes to absorb more light to be able to see better their surroundings. And that's how the eyes were developed in such a long, large way. However, during evolution, as you know, their eyes actually got smaller. And they actually are more telepathic through the eyes. And why is that? Because it's connected to the third eye, which is also connected to the heart. And they are able to see a little bit more of the spiritual world than, than uh, you may be able to. So yes, there is some connection with the eyes. However, the, the very fact that their eyes are big is because of their environment. Their environment was darker. They needed to leave more uh, light into their eyes, so they, their eyes evolved to be bigger. However, now that they have a lot of artificial light, the, over the many hundreds of years, their eyes are now starting to get smaller again. So, that is that into your question? Uh, yes, in part, yes. It was my answer as well. But I was thinking that greys evolved on sheep, so that was before they moved to the ship, they were still on the planet? And yes, that's where the greatest evolution comes, is when you're on your planet. Moving to the ships, they're still, their ships were still very dully lit because that's what they were used to. Bright lights hurt their eyes. So if, if you have if come from a planet that is sort of dull, you're not going to build a ship with bright lights. You're going to build a ship with the kind of lighting that you're used to. So that way that they, they didn't change their evolution at all. Was it darkness because of the nuclear winter on their planet? 
No, not because of nuclear winter, just because the sun was farther away. It was a larger sun, but it was farther away. The planet was larger, and so they had darker peri longer periods of darkness on their planet than you would have here. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm so happy that my uh, guess was largely confirmed. Yes. Uh, I also was asked about tall greys, and I assume that tall greys are yayo, but I'm not sure. Is it right? Tall greys are yayo, yes. Oh, nice. Thank you. And then we always come to the topic of agenda of different alien species and hybridization problem. And I say, yes, zeta greys are largely negative, and they do the hybridization because they want to take over the planet, but yeah, yell are nice, and they do hybridization to give us telepathic abilities. How wrong am I? You are not wrong on either account. However, there's a lot more to it. Uh -huh. The you give you uh, their DNA not only to build your psych psychic energies and fourth dimensional energies and your your uh, ability to ascend, but they also want to be able to interact with you as mates eventually. So they look much like you in some ways, but they want to be able to mate with you eventually and be because they find you very interesting as fodder for a greater civilization, if you will. Um, the other thing about the Yu Yil is that they they are not as intensely emotional as you are, and they find that a great plus in some ways, because they have come to the point where their emotions are moved into a small spectrum. Yeah. They would like to enlarge, they don't want to make it as large as yours, but they do want to make the specter, specter of emotions larger and be able to uh, make decisions better because of how they feel, because they feel that your intuitive powers are actually quite good in some senses. Those, that, those people that actually have intuitive powers, they studied and found that they're actually quite good. And so they want to get become more intuitive. Whereas the Zeta Graves, intuitive is different than um, uh, telepathy, by the way. Um, the Zeta Graves, yes, they have. They don't see themselves as bad. They see themselves as survivors, and they see themselves as those that are taking care of their own. Do you understand that? They just want to find a place where they can live and they don't care if the humans are there, they don't care if the humans are not there, they just don't care about that. They care about their species and they feel they're nurturing to their species and if, if, if we're in the way, well, that, you know, if the, if the earthlings are in the way, then bleh, that's okay. Um, they'll, they'll just have to be in the way. They'll get rid of them one way or another, so. But their intent is for our, our, their, the use of, of the planet. Mm -hmm. So they just do what they can. They don't really want to kill anybody. But if it happens, oh well. So that's basically, they want the resources. Their planet is almost uninhabitable at this point. Their ships are cramped. Nobody really wants them in other worlds. And, they, and Earthlings don't fight them. So, how much of the danger are they to us? Um, you're being protected from them, in uh, some. As a civilization. As a civilization, they're they they would be fairly harmful, I would think. But they're being kept away from your civilization to some extent. So, because they have very selfish wants and needs, and they're really not caring about the human wants and needs. So that's why they're being kept away a little bit more. They are all over your moon, so. Are they still doing abductions? They're not permitted, but if they sneak an abduction, they do it. They will if they, if they want to, but then they're, they're uh, punished, but there's not much we can do to punish them, really. So um, they try to get away with it as much as possible, but they don't get away with it very much anymore. 
but it still does happen once in a while. Percent-wise, compared to peak abductions in the last century, what would be the current level of abductions? Oh, 1%. Oh, so they... They're way down. They're way down. You don't hear people saying, I was abducted anymore, very much. A little bit. A little bit, but, but it's not the, always the Zetas. So... Um, we it's reptilian to sort of. The group spirit called L. Yes. And it's an ancient human deity. And we spoke to Yael a lot. And now it just was said that L and Yael are related. Is it right? <sighs> That's a hard one. Because there was a time where they uh, crossed paths, shall we speak. Uh, they are not related in their birth, in their, in their beginnings. They're not related from a genesis of any sort. But they did cross paths many, many, many centuries ago and were actually incompatible in many ways. But there was some compatibility enough to say that, yes, they, they did make a connection. Does that make sense to you? So genetically, they interbred? Uh, very little, but yes. Thank you. I have one question. Um, for our planet, for our, I'm speaking more spiritually, like our spirit helpers, um, our guides, um, the yes. help humanity. Yes. Uh, what is your perspective on that? Like, um, you, know, you know, how are they helping to keep you know, us protected, uh, us well, ascending? They do what they can, but most people don't even know they have a guides. And so they don't call on them, and they don't really get them involved in their life too much. They hear the thoughts that they have to give them. They give them the intents and stuff. Oh, yes. And some of them act on that just naturally. They naturally act on their spirit guides' intents for them because they don't give them actual orders. They don't say, do this, do that, do that. They, they give it an intent. You want to make sure that this happens, that they're protected, or that... You, and did you ever hear about the stories where a mother will wake up in the middle of the night, her child is in danger, and so she runs to the child? Yes. Spirit guides. Right? right. Exactly. Right. So this happens when, when people are sensitive to... Their, sp their own spirit. Not to say that like a born-again Christian or a Buddhist or whoever's highly spiritual will have the same thing. It is a, a personal growth within yourself that causes these kinds of things to happen. But if you are connected that closely to something or someone, you will know. Your spirit guides will know. And they will tell you. You, you are awakening to spirit guides now on your planet. This is part of your ascension. But before, you could, you could go anywhere and do anything and not know that you were actually guided by any thoughts. But yet, you'll go home that night and say, you know, I wonder why I did that. I wonder why I went there. Your spirit guides. They gave you a little inkling to go there. It was a reason for it. And you go, you know, if I wouldn't have gone there, I wouldn't have seen so-and-so, and blah, blah, blah. Little things that you don't even realize that your spirit guides do. You just think that it was just a coincidence. No coincidence. Do you understand? But you are being aware of your spirit guides now. They have names. Some of you have as many as six some as low as three. Uh, um, most have four, though. Now, uh, how do you perceive <coughs> spirit guides from your culture? Like, or, uh, and how do you relate to spirits, or is that kind of all integrated now? It's, no, it's not all integrated like you would think. Okay. But we are aware of our spirit guides because it is part of our culture to be aware of spirit guides. You see, we do have spirit guides. We don't need as many as you need down here because one spirit guide is many, many levels higher than your spirit guides. Do you understand that? So we would only have one higher self, basically. Okay, yeah. And that is integrated 
we learn about higher self at a very early age. And then many, not many years, but a f what you would call a few years here, later we learn their name and what they had done in past lives and what their reasoning is for being with you, particularly. And so that helps guide our lives. But before that, we were heading in a direction, and then we find our spirit guide, and we go, all right, that is where we're heading. Thank you. Do you experience the same amnesia when you incarnate into your culture, uh, or do you experience amnesia like we do here? Yes, it's a necessary thing. Okay. It is necessary, otherwise all your chakras would be... A, a, opened at once and you would be insane immediately. So you have to have that period where you grow into yourself. Do you understand? All your chakras cannot be brilliant at the, at birth. If they were, you would be like uh, in the, out of your mind. You would be spinning and dancing and, and all of a sudden you'd fall somewhere and, and you'd be gone. So uh, it's just the way it has to be. I have a question related to the spirit guide. Yes. About creating your own reality. So that yes. idea that we create our own reality in large extent comes from Bashar and he defines, explains to us that yes. now is first and the past is created for each now the past is created. Yes. And sort of a kind of uh, contradicts what is our experience in Western culture, especially like you always know your past, you know you come from your parents, you know that if you dig here you can find dinosaur bones. And now I'm starting thinking, and there is a game, okay, there is a computer game, Minecraft. Yes! As you walk on the surface of the world, or fly over, the world is created in front of you, you can see how it is created. Yes! It is created as you go. So I just wonder if I, I created this room for myself right now, and if I go outside and walk in the forest, is this forest created as I go in the forest in the real life, or is it already pre-created before I go there? Let me put it this way. In order for you to see it in the future, it had to be created in the past. Right. In order for you to be able to perceive what is coming, you had to see it in the past as well. So you see it all. Do you understand? You see the past, the, you see the future, but you're not realizing what you're seeing at that time. When you're coming upon it, you've already seen it, because it's familiar, correct? In some way, it may be different grass, it may be different trees, it may be different beings, it may be, but it's all things that you can perceive and understand. If you were not able to perceive it or understand it, it would not be there. Do you understand? <laughs> So, your perception of the nows. You see, we live in the nows. We can perceive everything around the nows, but we are creating the nows from the past. And we are creating the future with now. Do you understand that? No. I don't think you it's a little real. Huh? No, I don't. I don't think you answered my question. So, miracles. I want a miracle. I want a manifestation uh, of yes. something higher than me. Yes. And I dig for this miracle. And what, wherever I dig, say, I see a light in the sky. Yes. And I look closer and I see it's an airplane. I see another light hanging on the place. And it's a, a candle with a balloon around above it. So, so I never can you know, dig and find the proof that it is a miracle. Is it because... It's not there, or because I'm creating a reality where there is no place for it? You're creating a reality with your don'ts, and I don't, and I haven't seen, and I, it hasn't happened, and tell yourself it's going to happen. Tell yourself, you, you see a plane, you know what? You can disguise any vehicle as a plane, if that's what you think it is. You can disguise any ball of light as just an anomaly, if that's what you believe it is. So, if you keep saying, 
I don't see it, it never won't happen, why isn't me, ba 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 ba, say it is. I'm going to see it. I'm going to see it. And eventually you will. And that is the truth. Because they will bring it to you. <coughs> Every day I have a miracle. Every day I look, I go outside, look at the sky, and I expect to see a miracle. <coughs> and every day I don't see it. And for me it's a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way your mind works. <laughs> you create your own nows. Remember that. So our environment is essentially a hologram. It's created by our thought process, which is our beliefs. Well, hmm, how do I put this to you so that you will understand what the Earth is? It is a collective thought. But we, you see... It cannot be the thought of one person. It cannot be the thought of one person. But when you have, when you start a civilization, when you start a civilization, they come together and they have a thought of what the world is going to be like. Correct? You, they have a thought. That is what the world becomes and it grows from there. And all those thoughts afterwards are taught how to think from the thoughts before. So when you are born into this world, you may not see this world as this world, but you're taught to see it this way. Correct? Mm -hmm. You may see it totally differently. However, when your thoughts are born, you are taught what to think and what to see. And look at the plane and look at the house and look at the tree and look at the bunny. This is a bunny. But to a child less than one year old, it may not look like a bunny. It might be a fierce, ugly creature. But you train it to see everything the way you see things, and therefore the illusion continues. But it is not from one mind. It's from a collective mind that sees things the way they are. When you are together with your friends, you have seen... This is the way this city looks. This is the way this city looks. And it will not change. Because why? Because the, not enough minds are changed to see it differently. Does that make sense to you? So it is up to our collective mind to believe that we become telepathic? It is up to your mind, yes, in many, many ways. So, random events, are they really random, or spirit guides can pick and choose what will come out? What is random to you? Oh, if I throw a coin, 50% of the time it will be heads, and 50%... So, were you taught that 50% that, that, that of the time it would be heads, and 50% of the times it would be tails? Uh -huh. Okay, then it will be. But spirit guides can man manipulate that? Hmm? Guys, can they manipulate the randomness? They are not there to manipulate the randomness. They are not there to manipulate anything except you. They're not here to manipulate the randomness of your world, except for you. So if you toss a coin that you were taught that would be 50% heads and 50% tails, it will always be that way, unless you believe that it will be something different, like 30% heads and 70% tails. If you really, really believe that, that's what will happen. So, and some days we just get telephone calls or emails. Like, like a couple of weeks ago, I, I got. Your society has created all these things, and therefore they happen. Is it spirit guides who do that? No, it is your random community thought process that has created everything that is on this earth. Your spirit guides are there only for you. They are not there for, they are there to tell you things, yes. But they are not there to manipulate that which is already manipulated by your other perceptions. Oh. Do you understand they, that? They bring luck or mischief to us. They do not bring mischief to you. However, there are spirits that do. So who messed up my recordings this morning? <laughs> that is not for me to say. Because I wasn't there, for one thing. I have an idea who might have done it, but, but that, that 
particular creature has been around your house for quite a while now. Michael knows about him. It's not really, no. It's more of a little bee. Guidance. What? It wasn't higher guidance. Oh, no, 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 no. No higher guidance there, no. I was thinking that they wanted me to redo the work. No, they just wanted to see if you would yell, probably. And did you? Not much. They got a response. That's what they were looking for. Any more questions? Other than that, I, I could go now if you. Oh, yes. Can you tell me the difference between intuitive and telepathic? Intuitive is whenever you can touch someone and know things about their lives in a, a way that you are going to help them. Okay? It is something that comes immediately to mind that is a problem or needs attention. Telepathy is just connecting with the person on a level of one-to-one, -one, human to alien, or human to human, alien to alien. It is not necessarily there to help anyone. Your intuitive side is there for helpfulness. For helpfulness. To say, oh... You've had a very busy week this week. You need some energy here. You need some energy there. Or whatever. Or they have a problem. And you say, I can tell your heart is broken. And they cry and release some toxins and release some of that hurt. Do you understand? Well said. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. Because of their diets, basically. The diet is poison for this planet. What, actually, you have not evolved uh, far enough for this, the food that you are eating to be safe for you. You need about 40 more years of evolution for this kind of, this kind of uh, food to be safe for you. Do you understand that? Um, there's too much salt. There's too much artificial ingredients because there's too many uh, what you call radicals or free radicals, I think you call. The free radicals actually stay in your body and, and cause cancers and things of this nature. However, you can get rid of them spiritually. There are ways to get rid of them spiritually. You haven't reached that point yet. But you can get rid of them spiritually. If you believe that you can get rid of them spiritually, you can. Because you are in control of your universe, as has been said many times. You are in control of your health. You are in control of how you think and why you think the way you do. Therefore, you can heal yourselves. But it takes a true belief that it is true. And a lot of people cannot come to that point where they believe that they can heal themselves. They go, oh, it doesn't work for me, but it works for everybody else. <laughs> right? It doesn't work for me, but it works for you. I can heal you. <clears throat> I can heal you, but I can't heal me. So I hear that a lot. And it's not true. You can heal you. They say, well, it just goes in me and circles around and comes, uh, where does it go? Get on. But it is true that you can heal yourself. If you believe that you can. A lot of people don't believe that. But it is true. I think a lot of people don't feel they deserve yeah, exactly. to be healed. Just like not loving themselves. Exactly. Deserve it. Just deserve it. Just deserve it. You are perfect, wonderful people. You do your best, right? Deserve it. Don't think about all your faults. Heavens, we've been here all day. But just think that you deserve it. You deserve it. So take it. Deserve it. Okay? Okay. This is back to the dark, earlier about, about it's called dark shadows. Dark the shadow energy, yes. Shadow energy, which is most 
mostly, you were talking about mostly emotional and, and yes, the, spiritual and a lot of mental. Yes. And now you're extending that into saying if we really believe you can transfer that to the physical, physical sure. personal health. Why not? If everything is created by who? So, so. <laughs> so we create our own health? You create your own universe, universe. Entirely. But, you know, <laughs> the, the other thing about that you have to keep in mind. There's other people in your universe. Yeah. And they affect you as well. You can control your universe by yourself if you were alone. However, but you still can control your universe 90% of it. But um, there's other people that come into your universe. Now, if you don't want them in your universe, you don't create them in there. And they eventually go away. But if you create them in your universe, they stay in your universe. Do you understand that? If you create your universe with these people in it, they're going to be in it. If you create your universe and say, uh, no, eventually they will not be in it. That has to do with also with the law of attraction. You attract the things. That's part of your universe too. What you attract, it all works hand in hand. You build your universe, you attract what you attract. If you are not attracted to these people over here or whatever, they're really not part of your universe. They can't really affect it. Do you understand? So, yes. Mm. How important is to be successful? What is success? Is that a human term? Or is that a spiritual term? Or is that a physical term? Is that a mental term? Where is your success in your head? Say, in three-dimensional reality, success is pretty straightforward. Um, is it? As we, yeah, I mean, it's accepted. For you, word, yes. for you, success is one thing. For you, success is something else. For you, success is something else. So, in mainstream society, the... Success is having a lot of money and popularity or uh, being, giving your, getting to your goal. In spiritual language, success is happiness, enlightenment, joy. In physical terms, success is having the best body, having the best health. Having the best, whatever. In mental success, you have those that can think and outthink everyone else or can solve the greatest results of the universe or whatever. There are so many kinds of success. But you see, if you dwell on one kind of success, then other kinds of successes are not channeled in. Think of your total self as a success. You are a success no matter what state you are in at this time. And your next success will be the next now. All right. Uh, the question comes from observation. Yes. People, many people in my circle, become enlightened, lose their jobs, sit at home, are not capable of even paying for internet, and become isolated. Is it important to be successful, or it is more important to be enlightened? To how do they see themselves? It is important how they see themselves because if they don't feel successful, then their success is not pure. They are still successful no matter what because they have reached enlightenment. Yes, that's a success. If they have not built their universe the way they want, then they are not successful in that aspect. But you must look that there are so many aspects of, of your universe. How you feel about your own particular universe is important. If they can stay home, be enlightened and happy and not care about having a job, then they are successful. I guess us humans really have a hard time with all of that. Nobody yes. Is saying it, so I will. <laughs> yes. And that's what I see, and that's what my message was for today. That will help eliminate some of that 
those things that hold you into a space that you do not want to be in. And you do not look at yourself as successful, even though many things of you are successful. Do you understand that? But you can be more perfect, even though you're perfect now, you can be more perfect by letting some of that go and bringing that up, the spirit up. Ah, enlightenment. <clears throat> the definition of enlightenment is to take the spirit within and bring it out to the edge of the body. That is peace. When you feel the peace, then you're close to enlightenment. When people can find your light in the darkness, that's enlightenment. When you exude the light the spirit of love, exude the spirit of goodness and light and happiness. That's how do you get there though? That is up to you. Each person gets there in a different way. I would say that you have to meditate on that. Intend your meditation to say, what is my path to enlightenment? Because there are several paths to enlightenment. You must know who you are, who you really are, as an enlightened person in, this, in here, to bring that out. Where do you see your enlightenment? What do you see your enlightenment doing? What do you want that enlightenment to be? That is part of your journey. But when you can bring yourself to a place of peace, where all around you is peaceful and all around you is well with you. You have no problems with people. You have no problems with the earth, no problems with the sky, no problems integrating into any situation. You are at peace. That is the step before enlightenment. Then, <clears throat> moving that out into the world where people can see your light, see your understanding, feel your love, feel your compassion. That is enlightenment, and you don't have to speak a word. You don't have to speak a word. When they come to the great Buddhas and the great men of Nepal that are powerful and floating in the air because they have energy. Do they speak? Or can you look at them and see that they are enlightened? They don't have to speak to you, but yet you've learned so much about them just looking at them that they are at peace. They are one with the universe and they do not follow the laws of anything because they are beyond them. Do you understand that? The law of gravity doesn't concern them. But yet, when you look upon them, you learn a lesson. You learn a lesson. You learn a lesson. And if they speak, if they speak for you, you will be enthralled by their words because they are wise. They are pure, and they are meant just for you. They know just what to say to you. Not to anybody else in the world, but just to you. Because that's where they're at. I saw a program on TV today on the Science Channel. Yes. And they were saying that it's very, very important, and the reason that the aliens came is because of the gold. Gold to them is very, very important, and what they use it for or need it. What, what did they need? Gold is important to the universe. It is... The creation, the first creations were beams of gold light. This is symbolic of the true, true 
creation. The strands of gold light that broke off to become and create. So gold, when you find gold anywhere, it is a sign of and the symbol of the true creation. Do you understand that? The value of it to the universe is unknown to you. But they see it as a great thing of value, which you do too, because deep in your minds, you are all from the beginning, this gold. And so when you've seen it, it there's something in your head, something in our heads, that says, gold, yeah, gold. Why is that? It is the beginning. It is the strand of life that started everything, the gold. Do you understand that? And this is why aliens love the gold. However, they're not here for the gold. You don't have nearly enough of it to make them happy. So they are here to actually help you. I know some that might believe that they are here for the gold, and they would take it if you gave it to them. There's no question. But they are actually here to help you. You know your weather is craziness right now. They're doing many things. You're... There's many areas of the world with volcanic and uh, seismic problems. Is that the right word? Seism Seism him? Seismic. Seismic? Is that the word? Seis Seismic. I, Seismic. 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 I don't. Seismic. All right. Whatever. <laughs> that word. But anyway, um, there's many places with great problems. And it's only going to get worse, I'm sorry, but they're keeping it intact so that the fewest number of casualties can be had. Have you noticed that through some of these great, great storms and things, only few casualties? Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes. They're doing what they can because they, they move it just slightly here or there to get it just out of the way. And a few inches is all they need to do, in some cases. How rapidly do you expect the polar ice caps to melt and raise the ocean levels? Fast. 30 years. 30? 30, 40. That would be my prediction without even looking. Yeah, which would raise the ocean level how far? How high? Enough to be dangerous for some coastal areas, yes. But it is melting at an alarming rate at this time. Alarming. Greater than it has ever melted in any past generation. The last 10 years, it's, it's doubled, pretty much. And in, in fact, there has been disappearing icebergs. Disappearing icebergs. Not just melting a little, disappearing. Speaking about golden light, uh, yes. I was told once that people are either have golden light in their DNA or silver light. Are you familiar with that? Uh, silver light, yes. That's the next. That's the second wave of creation. Uh, the first wave is gold light. The second wave was silver light. So but there's many waves of creation, but some of them are, but some of them go back to gold as well, but not in the same, the, not the same basic gold that it was originally, but a lighter shade. But the original gold was stunningly bright, and it, it was beyond your comprehension. We were able to recreate it in a, a laboratory, and it was... Uh, it blinded three people, so it was unrealistic to you. It would be, they didn't expect that. But of course, we could bring back their sight, but it was, it was temporarily gone. If you look at my design, can you see if I'm a golden light DNA type? Yes, you are golden light. I've known that all along. Mm -hmm. Some of us are so. Some of us are silver. Some of you are silver, but that doesn't make you any less. What's the difference? How is it translated into life? 
the more ancient you are, the older the soul you are, the greater amount of lives that you've lived in, the, in your past, the greater the history is behind your chakras. Right. Speaking about gold, I had a question just before that, but it was synchronistic that you know, came to gold. So financial things. So I was, I'm speaking to different uh, light workers, and I hear this similar story that they've been guided to controlled poverty by some sort of guides, alien and spirit guides, and some other people, and some yeah. other beings. It looks like there is an idea somewhere up there that if you're at a certain level of poverty, poverty then it's, it's best for your spiritual growth. So it looks like there is a formula that <clears throat> they want to give you some sort of sort, certain amount of trouble, percentage of trouble, measure of trouble, so you're Trouble, but not to the level of damage, and then you grow uh, as fast as possible. It looks like that is their best uh, measurement of your progress. It's not exactly like that, but it, it can be seen that way. Um, you are given a lesson to learn in each life, mm -hmm. but it's not that the. Sometimes the lesson of poverty is that there is joy without money. There is joy without possession. And then there are some lives that you learn how to handle those possessions. And that is a harder lesson. That is a much harder lesson. It is a much, much harder lesson. Because those with possession have a greater dislike of themselves. Did you realize that? Why do they dislike themselves for having so much? They feel like they have too much. They should give it away or, or use it. But they don't do that all the time. And if they do, it's only a very small portion. Now, there has been exceptions where some have given it all away. And they've found freedom in that. And they had enough to survive. Because when you give away that amount of money, it comes back to you one way or another. And so they understood the law of attraction. Yeah. So, many of those that are very wealthy do not understand the law of attraction, but some do specifically know the law of attraction because that's how they got where they are. And those that were given the money do not understand, but do not feel that they deserve it. And so their vibrations are actually lower. And you would think, oh, if they have a lot of money, their vibration is higher. No, not always, no. I could go, I could talk about that for a long time, but I'm not going to. Because I visited many people that money, some are very happy, some are very, very sad. It seems to be a dichotomy with them. They're either very happy or very sad. There's nothing though in the middle there like, oh, I'm very rich, but eh, what the heck. It doesn't happen that way with the very wealthy. See, they're up here or down here with their emotions. See, and, and sometimes they go up and down. But those that have drawn their fortune from law of attraction seem to be much happier because they know where it came from, and they know how to continue it, and they know how to control it. So, that is that is how it is. So who is measuring their wealth of black workers, and who is making them more or less successful? You measure yourselves. I do not measure. Measure yourself. I'm not going to give you a measurement for that because each one is capable of something different. And a, each one of you is capable to reach the highest form of, of your vibration as possible. So to sit here and... I, I, that is one thing that I do not understand is why people ask why the, what their vibration is. It, it doesn't matter from one day to the next sometimes. Oh, the aliens will give you your vibration and tell you where you are. This is only to encourage you, basically, to keep moving forward.
right? But where you see yourself is much more important than where they see your vibration measured on their little scale. Because... I believe you are all individual vibrations that you, if your vibration is four and your vibration is four, you're still in two different places. Two separately total places. Do you understand that? So you could say, oh, my vibration is four, but that means very little to me. It just means that, okay, she's rising. That's good. But do not take that and put a lot of meaning in it. You know what I mean? You have to put the meaning into your life and in your universe and in your compassion and love for one another and your help for one another and your energy for one another and your community. And all these things are so much more important than knowing your vibration. It is. It's only there to support you and help you move up. That is what the, why they give it. That's the only reason for it. Not that it makes you better or worse than anybody else. Because, like I said, your four could be so different than that four. You know what I mean? You, you may be capable of 12, and you may be capable of 15. You know, it's... It's who you are, how old, how many lives you've lived. It's many, 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 many things. How much you've learned through the years, through your lives, through your re through your re-entering different lifetimes, and even as your alien lives are concerned. So much, so much is there. So I cannot just say a four is good, yeah. I can't do that. Yes. Can you um, only be reincarnated? Um, well, can you come back only as human, or can you come oh, back as human? Oh, no, no, human? no. Once you get out of this body and into spirit, yes. that is a whole community unto itself, the higher mind, the higher soul, whatever you want to call it, the community of spirits that exist, in whatever level you want to call that, the seventh vibration or seventh, what, whatever you call it, you decide. You look at your past lives. You take time and you look at the universe. And you look at what you've done. And you may decide to come back as a Pleiadian. Because that's, there's a lesson there you need to learn. Because... Maybe you want to reach a level where you want to be a spirit guide. Or you want to help with different things in the universe. Which there are many, 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 many jobs. But you have to learn through your lives, your realities, how to deal with that. Because you cannot deal with people on any other planet, Earth, any, any planet whatsoever, if you haven't learned how to deal with people or how to deal with the lessons that were here, that, were, that you don't... If you went up to be somebody's spirit guide and you didn't know anything about humans, how could you help them? How could you help them with their emotions if you didn't go through their emotional problems? How could you help them with their their physical body if you didn't have one or don't know anything about them or never took care of one. So yes, there's many things to learn through your lives and there's millions of lessons to learn. So there. And you never are done because once you've learned a million lessons, there's only a few million more to learn. So you keep learning. But you choose what lessons you want to learn in the next life. But then you lose your consciousness. And you come up and you learn the lesson as it's meant to be learned. Do you understand that? Because if you knew that it was coming, you couldn't learn the lesson. You can't learn a lesson if you already know the answer. Lifetime as an animal or a human? 
if you so desired, but you would be an exceptional animal. And usually they would push you into something else. But if there was a lesson to learn, you might spend a brief time as an animal. Animals live briefer lives. Did you know, have you noticed that? I mean, usually. That is the reason there's a briefer time to learn the lesson because they do not want you to stay in that body that long. They would prefer you learn a more um, social lesson, mostly. Not always, but mostly. Does that make sense? And so if I understand again, so an animal uh, is, has been a person in the past? You will perceive a certain personality. They all have different ones. They will not have the intellect as a, as a human, but that is not the reason why they're there. They're there to learn the lesson that that animal is going to teach them. Oh, really? Yes. Whoa. Whoa. Do you understand that? Yes, humanity is the most advanced species, but you can learn lessons from... But no, but that we're not. That there are other, like through um, some people oh. who've had near-death experiences... Yes. Well, ...have said that, um, I don't know if she meant uh, spiritually advanced or whatnot, but that we were not the most advanced species on the planet. She may be speaking of perhaps dolphins or... or Yes, dolphins or maybe even whales, which have origins in other, other dimensions, actually. So, uh, because they're a dimension of water. So, but here, they are secondary to the human species. And they, ha they understand that, but they come here purposely to learn about how to be submissive to the human species in some ways. Do you understand that? Yeah. But animals, yes. A, let's say this dog has many instincts. Do you understand that? Many instincts on how to live its life, what kind of food that it wants to search out. What possible lesson could he teach a human or another being? What do you think? How to be more instinctive, of course. How to be a dog. And when you learn to be a dog, you learn that obedience, you learn to depend on a master, you learn that you are not always responsible for the food that you eat, or the water that you drink, or the place that you live. And some people need to be brought down. Do you understand? They have to understand what it's like to be obedient, servile, and also treated lovingly. So, there are lessons to learn for every animal. So then usually it's a volunteer spirit that wants to come as a dog? Of course. Why else because would you come? Because they want to learn a lesson. Yes, it's not that they were a bad person in their last life. No, don't follow that. Don't follow that. Don't follow that. Okay. Don't follow that. Because they are become, and you become part of the higher, uh, the, the higher soul. Mm -hmm. And then you decide what you lessons you need to learn. And very rarely in this day and age does anyone who has been around for several hundred lifetimes become a dog. Okay. Very rare. Very rare. So they're basically new souls then? Some new souls. Yes, they're new souls born all the time. They are created and once they're created they do not die because they become part of the energy. And it's, why do you think the universe is expanding? They it's thought part of the cycle. It is a, they thought that it was coming but it is continuing, and guess what? It's speeding up. Why is it speeding up then, as it expands? I mean, I can understand why it would expand, right? 
from the Big Bang. Woo. But why is it speeding up instead of slowing down? Why do you think? Why do you think? Poorly programmed artificial reality. Uh, more new souls are coming. More new souls are coming. More they need more space. They we need more reality. They it is being created. It's continually creating itself. It can't stop itself from creating itself. It's continuing to move faster out because it's creating itself. It's very simple, but very complex, but very simple. Were there many big bands before? There were some. That's a whole another five-hour discussion. Uh, I have a question about gods. Um, yes. Uh, Bashar told us how you ascended the Sasani civilization. Right? Yes. Oh. In three days. Yes. A being came and telepathically connected Sasani. Yes. Was it a Jesus? It was Did not Jesus, no. Not Jesus. But it was the spirit of Jesus as well as the spirit of many other ascended masters, as well as a collective, higher, a creative collective, yes. But Jesus belongs to it, Buddha belongs to it. There are many ascended masters that belong as they come into the collective as higher beings, they become creator, creators. So. so how much of personality of Jesus did this it had all of it, and he, as well as billions of others. Well, you know what? I have to go now. Unless there's one more question I can entertain. Give us a blessing. Ah, a blessing for you. There is a rushing of spirit. It is in the mind and it fills the body. There is no density in the body when the mind is full. Love penetrates through all these things, down through the light shards into the darkest areas of the universe and makes us aware that love and compassion are creators as well. We bring forth our love and compassion to share with one another like bread and wine, like you learned in your Bible. But our Bible says, take everything and use it for its purpose. Love everyone for what they are and who they are. Involve everyone that is part of you to be part of you. Care for those at a distance that cannot be part of your universe. Run with the thoughts that appear before you and be glad for them, for they know that you have created them and you are with them in the now, now, and yesterday, now, and future nows. The properties of understanding, let them build within you. Let them create a tangible pyramid of energy. And let it move out among the stars. For every movement flutters a bit and affects the next molecule to the next. So be a great wave as a community. Be a great wave as an individual. Shine out and shine forth and become that who is perfectly perfect for you to be. Do not accept 
that which does not resonate with you. But ground yourself in full light and understanding that your roots are important. Namaste. Namaste. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hey. You got your body back? <laughs> yeah. Very good. Do you need anything? Just the water. <laughs> oh, that was Chell, right? Yeah. Was he informative? It's, it's this thing, this vortex that I sit on, the best messages come through here, I think. Best messages come through in this vortex. I could never, ever think of whatever to say to a group of people. I mean, what could I say to you that they, that would be more important than what they say, so... I'm so glad they say it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, that's why we invited you so they would come through. We certainly didn't invite you for you. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You ought to know that by now. Yes, I, I know that. <laughs> I felt the topic sort of inferiority when you started. I just felt like crushed. Why? It was just too good. I, could say, I, know, I never said anything like that. It was just too good at the beginning. It was too good? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh. It was inhumanly good, yeah. Inhumanly good? Almost like Bashar. Oh, really? Well, he was yeah. from the same species, so. Well, it was, it was quite enthusiastic in the beginning. You could just, you could sense Bashar. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Oh, really? Cool. Oh, yeah. So, oh, well, that's... Right. You keep your eyes open. Yes, yeah, so I keep my eyes open. What well, Bashar closes his, right? Yep. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. Okay. This well, guy can see. see. He, he do that to his body. This entity can see. Both for the new people and those of us who've heard you a few times. Mm -hmm. um, would you, at some point, not today, but at some point, so list the names of these various entities or aliens like oh. Bashar? Are they from a planet or a spaceship? Are they on Earth currently? Oh, yes. Um, uh, I've lost track of which one is who. Which one is who. <laughs> Sometimes I do, too. One so. like a gingerbread man. And one yeah, he's on a planet. Yeah. So what? I forget which is which. Yeah, yeah Lakesh is on a planet. The three that are on the ship are Dizdu, Tepe, and Takur. And Pentim, actually, four. So those four are on the ship around the, our... The one that spoke. Takar was the female that spoke. A month ago or so. yes. 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 The one with the low voice. Yes. Can you tell she was here recently, like at night? Uh, she'll, she could tell me that, yes. Yeah. She can tell me that. And she's around, uh, she goes to their house every now and then. Mm -hmm. So I know that. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure she comes here, I'm sure. Absolutely. This, there's so much energy here. It's so, so good. I'm sure a lot of aliens visit here just to be near the vortexes, especially the, the one back there. So it's so strong. The 16 level one, it's really, really, really strong. So. Does she go to their house because there's something they live in? Or they're, um, they're very aware of, well, I can tell Angela visits the colonies, so they visit her too. Oh. Mm. So. Shakai are small, relatively. Yes. Uh, bold. Bold. Uh, men are bold. Um, they look like greys. They have human DNA. Some of the human DNA there. Human right. and grey hybrids. Mm -hmm. um, very energetic. Overwhelmingly energetic. 
Mm -hmm. um, skin is whitish. They don't wear any dress. They don't have any sexual visible organs. Wh wh which one is that one? Chikani, the ones that spoke to me. Therefore, they live. They live to be intellectuals in a certain sense, but they live to help others, and their messages are very strongly intended for helpfulness. Every time they come, they come for helpfulness in some way. The first time they came was for helpfulness as well. How to get rid of dissipate. Uh, uh, energies that were not real or something. I, I forget what it was. So, but this was even deeper. This this became even. It was deeper this time than the last time. It was a like last time was a preparation for this time. <laughs> Shakai moved to the fifth dimension. So uh -huh. they are somewhere between fourth and fifth. So they are barely physical. They mostly exist as a spirit, but they can manifest as a body. Okay. Uh, their uh, ships are triangular. Wow. I'm glad he was helpful. I didn't know who was coming tonight. I w I'm surprised it was Shell again because I f figured somebody else would come, but uh, he must have had the strongest message, so they let him through. We mentioned him in the car. Oh, he did, yeah. But I didn't think he would come tonight. <laughs> Little do you know. Yeah, little do I know. I don't know who's coming. I don't know who's coming. They, they don't tell me ahead of time, usually. I only knew once ahead of time. That was it. So, all right, that's it. All right. Okay, no further comments for the group. Any questions for me? Because they do Saturday morning programs like Yeah, this. I have a Saturday yeah, morning. Every Saturday, we didn't skip Saturdays for a long time, almost a year. We have not a year, not a year. Almost... Months. Yes, we have a. Eight months, nine months. Yes, it's been a. We have a webinar oh. every Saturday morning. We started the, the first webinar was I think November, so it's almost a year. Almost um, a year already. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so we have a webinar every Saturday morning at 10 a.m. You're welcome to come to my house. People do. In fact, Barbara uh, Barbara said she's going to come tomorrow. And um, I have people. I had somebody from Sweden wanting to come, but that's fallen through. So. Um, actually, fortunately, it's fallen through. Live audience really helps because energy is like better, there is uh, energy. If, yeah. if you want to see it in the camera, if you want to see it uh, yes. visible to the audience. But Are you coming tomorrow? Nice to no. Okay. You were saying you were going to come one week, so. Yeah, everybody, everybody in the webinar, are they there? Yes. Oh, no, no. They're all over the world. Jim and I are there. We have sometimes visitors, but most of them are, you know, all over the world. All over the world, yes. Saturday, 10 a.m., every Saturday we have it. Yes, there's um, a lot of places in the world. We have China on there, and yeah. England, and Ireland, Australia. Malaysia, Australia. Yes. It's bad for Californians because 10 a.m. here is 6 a.m. there. Yeah. Yes, it's bad for all those that are three hours yeah. behind yeah. us. Yeah, they, suffer. they suffer, and some of them still do come, though. Mm -hmm. um, but we, but we do have a world audience on Saturday morning. Europe is good. Europe yeah, Europe's great. Yeah. Six hours ahead. Yeah, so it's perfect for them in yeah. many ways. So. So people started speaking galactic languages. Liran mostly Liran and other languages. Jim speaks that, and many others speak. And several started channeling. So today I was part. You know, I saw it. one more person was channeling. So it's amazing. We're midwives for channelers so on the the uh, human colony we birth out some channelers they just get their galactic language and they start channeling a little while later so it's very cool it's we nice love to that become a part of community and when you say i want to be with you i want to speak galactic language i want to channel they listen and they they respond they help yes mm -hmm. it's it's a wonderful community very loving, very caring, and they've there's some very close friendships there now, just from coming in and, and talking and hangouts and stuff like people from across the country, across the world have become very, very good friends. And so they have a comedy club there, yes. Yeah. And they have a comedy club. Um, I, I am I the 
one thing that stuck with me was one of the, they were talking about ascended masters, but they called them ascended masters. So <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. So uh, yes, galactic comedy sort of thing. So did you get that? Yes, ass ended. I thought that I thought that was very clever. So he was saying, I was speaking to the ass ended masters, <laughs> and then they'll make fun of some of the channelings in Takara. They just make fun of you know they they uh, parody things. So it's very funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what they do. They wordsmith and do parodies on the different entities that show up. So I'm going to get some more water. And